so. As you can see by the exterior, we are in an IL-2 today, the IL-2. Um, I'm not going to call it the Storm of it because I'm not sure whether it was officially nicknamed that, but we are in the IL-2 Type 3 and today we're covering ground attacks. Um, so as you can see, I am in the Swiss Alps for some reason. I just felt like the Alps were a good place, you know, to have an attack. And I currently have this set up here. I have two bombs and I have four rockets and a lot of gun. So what the plan is, is I'm going to drop into the valley in a minute. And I am then going to make my way towards the target. And we're going to, you know, go for a low level bombing run. I'm going to come back around. We're going to do something along the lines of a rocket attack, and then we're just going to finish off the targets with guns. I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of talking in the middle, but we're now going to roll over and we're going to go into the valley. So here we go. As you can see, exterior gun sight, which I'm not particularly fond of, but... We are now have quite a lot of speed, and if I throttle up, we can probably maintain that. So the Il-2, as you can see, is really not the most maneuverable of aircraft. I have tried so many aircraft today to get the right one, and this is as good as I can get it, seriously. I've tried the A-20, I've tried the um, B-25, the Mosquito, the P-2, the P-3. I've tried too much, and nothing seems to work, but what I'm going to do... I'm just going to speed up time for a little bit. I'm actually going to go a bit lower. And I'm going to go off to the side of the target for the minute. Uh, I can't really see a lot because of that massive bloody thing in the way. But what we're now going to do is at 210 miles an hour. We're going to gradually bank into our target. I'm not quite there yet. So here is our target. And if you can't see that over there. I'll zoom in a bit. There's some hangers, and there's a lovely, 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 nice long row of hinkles that I've set up. In fact, pretty much everything on this base has been set up by me. So, uh, here's what's going to happen. We're going to get ourselves lined up. And I'm going to go in for a gun attack. We're going to drop our bombs. Fly away. I'm not sure whether they've blown up. They should have done. I hope they did. I cannot get over that gunner, seriously. But as you can see, from that initial attack run, we got quite a lot of kills. And I'm just using the gun sight, you know, to pre aim my target. And something you need to um, remember when you're doing these attacks is the way you have your gun zeroed, your convergence distance, is it's just so important. Seriously, I have mine zeroed at 400 meters here, which is about the range that I'm shooting from. And that's when your bullets cross over. It's also where your bullets are going to cross over each other and they're going to fall through the middle of your gun sight. If um, if you're shooting someone down at 200 metres and you've got your gun's convergence at, I don't know, the stock 500, your bullets are going to fly over the target and they're probably going to go a tad wide. But that's irrelevant. So... I'm actually going to do is I'm going to throttle back, and these ones here, what we're going to do is go for a nice little rocket attack. No, we're not. That's way too slow. Let's go for these Heinkels. Rockets. Woo. As you can see, I got those two there. We can just see the um, red clouds. Okay, right. I'm actually going to bloody open the radiator up because we are getting quite a lot of overheat here. So I intend to kill as much as I can with my remaining um, ammunition. So we're just going to get up to a decent spot where we can turn around, I'd say, over here. Jesus Christ, this engine does overheat. And the auto is so underpowered that you just have to run it at full throttle. So, oh, way too much ammo on that target. I'm just going to leave it there. Right, okay. 
what I'll do is I'll come back around. It's probably not too in depth this one. This really is not hard to do. You just need to know where to aim. Well, no, you just need to aim at your target, pull the trigger. Rockets, you do have to compensate for a drop on. Rockets can be adjusted for flight time, but I would highly recommend just not firing rockets until the last second possible. So, oh, got some condors in these hangars. I forgot about those. Uh, let's say about there. No. Jesus Christ, they don't have to take a beat in. Well, they've probably got a lot of holes in them now, but oh well. Okie dokie, so let's uh, just see if I can... Uh. Oh wait, was that a Tucson speed? It was. Right, okay, I'm just going to fly quite a long way away and then we're going to come right around. That was a good... that was a nice turn. Right, okay, what's left in this line? A couple of planes. one less. I've got three there though, so I'll go around for one last run. And I'll just empty all of my ammo into them. And if I've got any more left, then I'll I'll keep fighting. But oh well. Okay, so like I say, I really can't do a lot of explaining for this. This is just a case of you know, just knowing where to aim. Aha, I've run out of cannons. And that is not quite it. I still have MGs. So I will finish off my MG ammo and then I will land. Somewhere else though. Not here. <laughs> and that is it. So, just going to go down nice and low. Next to our targets. Oh! Oh, that didn't go well. Ah, well, I think I pushed the stick down just a bit too far. There's like a last minute thing there. But how many aircraft escaped in this little row here? So we've got three on that main row. So we killed seven. We killed another three here, so that's ten. Um, we got a 109 back here. I think, yeah, we've got a 109. Uh, but we didn't do any damage to these condors in here somehow. Literally, I went and shot at one of them and they took, like, no damage whatsoever. I think it was that end one. But, oh well, so... Like I say, ground attacks, there is really nothing to it. You could... It's just a case of... Drop your bombs... When you feel... Is this... You... Um, you're going to hit the target. There with ground attack aircraft like the L2 there is no sort of middle zone as such that you can just fly and drop your bombs and you know you're bound to hit a target there's no bomb site or anything on the L2 if you're flying something like the PE2 there is a bomb site on certain aircraft and definitely the PE3 but it's not worth using it at the altitudes that you're going to be flying on low level ground attacks rockets you know Try and use them at the latest second possible. They will, ma you know, you're going to maximise your chances of getting a kill. And guns, you know, make sure you set up your convergence distances. And um, you can either go for one long pull of the trigger or go for burst. Something I didn't mention about bomb fuses: set your bomb fuses up so they blow up about three to four seconds after you've dropped them. This will mean that once they've dropped, it gives you time to get out. Normal bombs, when they touch the ground, will explode instantly. And this means that if you're flying at low level, providing you don't pull away enough, the bombs will explode and they will kill you. So set up bomb fuses, um, set up your gun convergence distances, and practice, I suppose, because there's no real technique to ground attacks. It's just whatever you feel works best for you. I'll see you in a minute for torpedoes. So as you can see we are in the air and what I'm now going to do is I'm going to power up as much as I can just to get the plane up to altitude. So about there and we're going to drop the bomb bay doors and I'll show you what I'm doing in a minute. So 
that needs probably to go a bit higher. There, good. Okay, so the torpedo has broken into the water and has not broken on entry this time. Well, hey. I didn't actually see what speed that dropped at, actually. But I need to get out of the way of the Bismarck fast, because it is going to start hammering me with AA soon. So, we're probably going to go and end up and land. But, if I just open the um, comms menu up for a minute, as we can see, there's a big line underneath, and it says, Height drop 98 feet. That's the maximum drop height that torpedo can be dropped from. Velocity drop, 127 miles an hour. Velocity impact maximum 165 miles an hour. So as you can see, there's the hit on the torpedo, and um, which basically means when we drop, we want to be going about 127 miles an hour minimum, and the impact can't into the water can't be above 165. Otherwise, the torpedo breaks. The angles you don't need to worry about. Now, what will happen if none of those uh, conditions are met. Well, the torpedo is going to break on entry to the water. And if you don't know what that means, it basically means that it's going to break. It, it's pretty self-explanatory. It, it will break. It's just going to break. Alright? There's nothing special about it. It will just break on entry. For some reason, frame rate's just dropped horribly. Okay, right. Let's see if we can slow down, shall we? Come on. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Let's bail out of that, should we? Because everyone else is dead. I have no idea what happened there. But anyway, we haven't sunk the Bismarck, but um, as you were able to see, and we can still see, they are the conditions that have to be met for a torpedo to be dropped successfully. If the torpedo is dropped in stock L2, none of these things matter. I mean, it's still good to, you know, think about what sort of speed you want to be doing, what height you want to be doing. I don't think any of these matter in the stock version of the game, whatever version you're playing. But in Ultra Pack, for instance, and Mission's Over, in Ultra Pack, you have to meet certain conditions. And I don't know why, but the realistic torpedo settings are fairly realistic, and I do like them. You know, they do give you a sense of what it's actually like. But not meeting those conditions will mean the torpedo breaks on entry to wa into water. Try and find a platform to drop your p torpedoes from that's got a level stabilizer. The A20 doesn't have one on this variant. Something like the Heinkel, or I think even the Avenger, will. Because being able to put a level stabiliser on and maintain your altitude, just controlling your speed, is so much easier than having to control both with a stick. So, I hope you enjoyed it, today's episode. Remember, next episode is going to be complex engine management, so it's all going to be getting a bit complicated from here on in. We're going to have complex engine management, then we're going to have jet combat, and then we get the two bonus episodes. I've decided that one of the bonus episodes is just going to be covering different aircraft and the, uh, like I've said before a million times, the quote-unquote 1946 section of the game. And bonus two, I've thought about now, I might do a full mission builder episode. So how the full mission builder works, because that's what I've been using here. So, you know, how the full mission builder works, what you can do with it, all the different... Um, things. I mean, there is a brilliant SAS forum. Jesus Christ. <laughs> there is a brilliant SAS forum um, thread that's got all of these different things on it that are like um, how to set up bombers in formations that I'm probably going to try now. You know, how to set like a pack of bombers up, you know, how to get 3D mode, uh, placing objects, making airfields look realistic, everything like that. And I just think it'd be cool to make a video on it. So, um, I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Tara.